Jim Sifahogan, uh, we had a, an anniversary 10 years after enlargement uh, a few months ago and uh, you took an important part 10 years ago by this process or even before. Uh, if you uh, look back toward this time, um, has, the, has this expectations went through what, what you were thinking about, what will this bring, the, the whole enlargement process in the EU? My answer is a, a clear yes. Our expectations came true, promises uh, were uh, kept. The, the whole issue was to make sure that uh, the process of democratic transformation in Eastern and Central Europe would be irreversible. To anchor this country firmly on this community of democratic nations uh, in Europe according to their own to their own to their own to their own wishes uh, improving their security uh, improving their political systems uh, enhancing their uh, economic opportunities I can say that I'm a little bit but only a little bit uh, disappointed about the fact that the, dis the economic disparities are still are still there in the case of the Czech Republic, uh, the situation is a little bit different because the Czech Republic is leading the, the highest, the highest average of income and GDP uh, of the whole group of new entrants uh, in 2004. But still, if you look at uh, the, uh, the pace of the development, it's a little bit too slow. So it could be could be faster. But it's difficult to say how much uh, the financial economic crisis uh, that hit us in uh, 2008 uh, influenced uh, an otherwise more positive development. But in principle, yeah, uh, I think uh, it was a big success, uh, one of the biggest successes in the history of, uh, of, of Europe, and we can be really proud that we have achieved it. I will take this too. It's a bit disturbing. Would you? Would you say that the new member countries somehow found their uh, unique role in the EU? Finally, yes. After after in, after some after some irritations uh, and uh, a slow with a slow beginning, uh, I would say that the differentiation between old and new member states is already outdated. Yeah, it's it's in my view it's finished. And if you look at the composition of the of the new Commission. Uh, and uh, the distribution of responsibilities uh, in the new commission, uh, you, you find uh, that, is, that they are not only treated uh, as equals. I think there is a clear, a clear uh, advantage uh, for, uh, for, for, for the so-called new member states. New member states have extremely important portfolios uh, in, the, in the commission. Uh, the uh, Number one in Europe, President of the European Council, the former Prime Minister of Poland. So I think we can say that after ten years, uh, the, uh, the, new, the new member states have arrived uh, at the centre of, of European of European policy making. In, in some in some countries, uh, the process was a little bit sluggish, but uh, that was also due uh, to political developments in the country themselves. For instance, in your country, in, 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 in the Czech Republic, uh, European institutions were not responsible for the fact uh, that there was a very Eurosceptic uh, president uh, of, uh, of, of, of your country who isolated the Czech Republic a little bit uh, in, in the European family. But that is now, that is now overcome. And I'm very happy that my old friend Milo Seman uh, uh, is, now, uh, is, now, is now the president. Uh, and his uh, uh, European European uh, conviction uh, is beyond any doubt. Actually, lately, with his relationship towards Russia, there are also some kind of misunderstanding. Yeah, but, uh, but as you are saying, it's a mis 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 misunderstanding. Uh, I, I, I share. So you clearly see him as a, a pro-European. Absolutely, politics. no doubt at all. Absolutely, absolutely. If we take the whole region, uh, I mean, the situation of the countries uh, has changed. So, as you mentioned, Czech Republic 10 years ago, it was kind of a mm, premium or a country in front, uh, if we talk about economic development. It still is. 
But now, during the crisis, for example, Poland took also kind of a successful way. If we compare it with the Czech Republic, we had kind of a long uh, political crisis. There were early elections, maybe we could say too often. And uh, the countries are somehow yet uh, in a different role. If we uh, take Hungary, it's it's another story. They're, they are uh, maybe even in a more, much more complicated role. Do you see uh, that the region somehow still still creates kind of a mm, single entity inside of the EU? They or never did, no. Never did? No, they, they never did. I have, always, I have always questioned this. I know we have the Visegrad group, and, uh, 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 but I have never seen the Visegrad group as a real pressure group in the European Union. And this is not the way how the European Union functions. We do not have a group, groups in the EU. We do not have... Uh, stable alliances. Uh, it's, it's always, it's always, it's always changing. And uh, that, that was a little bit surprising for me uh, that the new member states did not create uh, one group uh, in, 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 in the European Union, defining uh, their special interests, def uh, defending their special interests, and, and, and pushing, pushing, uh, pushing. Them. They didn't do that, uh, and. Uh, it, it's, it's simply not the way uh, how, how the business is done at European level. So I, I don't think uh, that, we, uh, that, we, that, we, that we that we can see the new member state as one as one group. Geographically, uh, you have of course some regions uh, which are closer than others, the Baltic, the Baltic states, for instance, the, Benel the Benelux, the Benelux countries, uh, the Czech Republic and Slovakia, Romania and Bulgaria, perhaps, but. It's, it, it does not. It does not mean uh, that they that they create uh, a stable, uh, permanent uh, political alliance within the EU. And I'm very happy about this. We shouldn't have that. We have uh, heard today uh, from uh, some people uh, comments that there could be a kind of a new level of cooperation, so called Weimar Triangle again. Uh, those three strong countries: Germany, France, and Poland. Do you see this as a realistic? As a no, it does already. It does already exist. Uh, that was created in, in uh, if I'm not mistaken, in 1991. Uh, and the, the original original idea was that Germany and France would support Poland uh, on, uh, on 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 the way towards uh, European and transatlantic integration. That was achieved, and since then the idea of the Weimar Triangle is uh, to, uh, to to function uh, as an engine for European integration. By chance, I can tell you, but I can tell you, you know that I am teaching European governance at. Uh, the Viadrina University, Frankfurt, and just last week uh, I, I had to re review a, a master thesis on the Weimar Triangle, mm -hmm. a, very, a very good one, uh, written by a Polish, uh, by a highly talented Polish student. And the, uh, the, 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 uh, the study uh, analyzed the question whether this Weimar Triangle uh, really functions and came to the clear conclusion it does not. Uh, okay. it, it does not. It is, it is more or less an illusion. And I share the view fully from, based on my own experience. The big problem is that uh, for France, um, the, uh, the relationship uh, with Germany has a completely different quality than the relationship with Poland. For Germany, for Germany, it's different. Yeah, Germany in the middle, yeah, uh, has has a has a strong interest uh, to entertain uh, the same excellent relations with France and the same excellent relations with Poland. And, and and by the way, in both cases, the historical reasons are the same. It's reconciliation, and uh, and Germany Germany has to make has to make sure that the mistakes of the past uh, will uh, will not be will not be repeated. But this triangle. Uh, is, uh, is not uh, is, 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 is not a real triangle, uh, and uh, the cooperation between France and Poland is not is not very strong. Uh, and uh, no, uh, there is. Uh, I, I'm very very skeptical uh, whether uh, this will be uh, a, a new engine for European integration. I I, I do not see uh, the. Uh, the strong idea that uh, that unites them. Do you think that the French, the Germans, and, and the Poles uh, have one strong idea 
uh, what we are doing about Europe's future? No, I doubt it. So, the, uh, in my view, there is no reason to be worried about uh, about this cooperation. So, what could be the power uh, which would bound the countries together? Would it, would it still no, be the currency? Uh, no, the currency. Well, this is economy. Of course, the, of course, yeah. the economy. The econo- On a political. Of course, the econo- economy is, uh, is still absolute, absolutely important. But but b- b- without European integration, we would be lost in the world of tomorrow. We can we cannot we cannot compete as nation states. Right? Too, too, too weak. So I think that's. That's obvious, but also politically, it's true. I think the the the, 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 the main point is uh, that we have to explain to citizens that we need European integration in order to make sure that we can maintain our European way of life in the 21st century. Because m- many many elements uh, will threaten it. Uh, the economic globalization is only one element, but. Uh, as, a, as, a, as a byproduct of economic globalization, we will have a complete change of the global of the global governance system. And the big question will be uh, whether we, as Europeans, uh, will be uh, global players uh, at equal footing. And, and I'm not asking for uh, for a dominating role for Europe. I do not I do not see Europe as a superpower or dominating power. But I want to see Europe in the role as a as an active global player at equal footing with the others, uh, and if we don't, if we don't achieve that, uh, the the result will be uh, that we will lose our freedom, that we will lose our security, and that we will lose our prosperity. At long and that, that's the main reason why I think we have no realistic choice and no realistic alternative. Uh, than uh, to to continue with the project of European integration. Ten years after the enlargement, what's for you the biggest difference that we have now in the EU? After the enlargement? Ten years after the enlargement. Well, I mean, well, well, let me, let me, of course, it is uh, the diversity. Diversity uh, is, uh, is 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 much is much stronger, uh, and. Um, uh, let, let me say it. Cal- cal- the polit- political culture uh, is uh, is more is more ca- is more is more is more is more colourful, uh, but the system as such, yeah, I must I must say, uh, did did not did not change very did not change very much, and uh, the new new member states were absolutely able uh, to to deal uh, with the uh, with, with the political machinery and, and with the procedures and 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 the rules. So there was not so much change in the system, yeah, in the, in the system, because a lot of change in the societies, but in the system as such, 